After getting back from our big journey to Kentucky for the thoroughbred makeover, I wanted to collect some of my thoughts and put it together in uh, what I'm calling an adult amateur's guide to the thoroughbred makeover. So I broke my thoughts up into three different parts, finding a horse, training for the makeover, and competing at the makeover. I sourced my 2021 horse through New Vocations, which is a reputable adoption agency from whom I had previously adopted two standard breads. I was familiar with their contract and appreciated how transparent they had been with my previous two horses. So when I reached out at the end of 2020 looking for an RRP eligible horse, they had a couple horses available and I ultimately ended up with Hard DSE, a horse who had raced once uncompetitively and then was retired by his connections to new vocations. I think that one of the key factors that allowed us to make it to the makeover was Moose's temperament. He's brave, willing, and can definitely take a joke. I really appreciated having him go through an organization that could assess him before I got him. And since New Vocations has a 60-day trial period, I felt really confident in my horse choice when I got him home. According to the stats provided by the RRP, about half of the horses registered for the 2021 Mega Makeover were acquired directly from their racing connections. However, as an amateur with limited connections and experience sourcing a horse directly from the track, I chose to go with an aftercare organization that could assess the horse for me. Not every horse has a suitable temperament to make it to the makeover in 10 months. If you work with a reputable aftercare organization, they should be able to help assess the horse to make sure you find one that's suitable for your goal of making the makeover. A lot of trainers will acquire their horses in the winter, but if you live where there's winter weather and you don't have an indoor, you may not be able to get a lot of rides in right away. But never fear, this is the perfect time to do groundwork to help when you do make it into the saddle. I also did a lot of work practicing general ground manners like ground tying or leading politely and learning to drop his head and take a deep breath, all of which were really helpful when we did start traveling places. Once your horse has mastered the basic aids like walk, trot, canter, stop, and steer, then I recommend starting trailering out to new locations right away. Even better if you can find somewhere to stay overnight away from home to help get your horse prepared for shows. Moose really benefited from regular visits to my trainer's barn. It was a low pressure way to get experience off property. He got to go to a place that he'd already been and was able to settle in more quickly and have a positive experience and association with the trailer. Then once he was really confident going to my trainers, I was able to bring him to new places without much fuss as well. Once your horse is safely trailering out and able to ride in traffic, I would make an effort to get to your first show. For us, there was nothing quite like getting to our first show to really highlight where the gaps in Moose's training were that we really wanted to address before the makeover and highlight what parts of the show environment he might need a little bit more practice with before the makeover. I found my baby thoroughbred to be very accident prone, so make sure you have a good vet on hand for incidents such as this, or this, or this, or this, or this or this. A good relationship with your vet will also help ensure you're able to pass the entry exam at the makeover. Last and perhaps most important, stay in your lane. If you join the Thoroughbred Makeover group, you'll see this posted over and over again because it's good advice. Every horse progresses at their own rate. Let your horse progress the way they need to and don't get distracted trying to keep up with the progress you see other people making on social media. So now that your horse is fully trained and very prepared for the makeover, what should you do next? You should reread the rule book and then maybe reread it again. Each discipline is not exactly how it would be at a recognized show. Make sure you know exactly what's going to be asked of you in any disciplines you've entered, including any compulsory movements or tests you need to perform. Be flexible when you show up to the makeover. You can do your best to set yourself up for success, but at the end of the day, it's a brand new situation and your horse might not be acting like themselves, so be sure to meet them where they're at. And for some logistical advice, if you can afford it, I recommend renting a golf cart. The horse park is enormous and it takes forever to walk from one side to the other. So if you want to watch some of the other disciplines, it's a lot easier if you're able to drive a golf cart to the other side. 
I also wish I'd taken more pictures while I was at the event. There was a show photographer on site who took pictures that turned out great, but I just wish I had more that I had taken myself. Uh, some behind the scenes photos and maybe some videos. At the makeover, I only competed in dressage. And that was great because it let me get the lay of the land of the horse park and I wasn't overwhelmed with trying to figure out how to school for multiple disciplines. However, if I could go back and do the makeover again with another horse a second time, I would love to enter a second discipline, like competitive trail or freestyle. Those were my two favorites to watch. So that is my five minute guide to the thoroughbred makeover. I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot and so if you're on the fence about going, I definitely recommend giving it a shot.